Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks 2021 and Enscape 2.9 tutorial. Now I've been working on a new project for quite a large extension to a three-story house in uh, Leicester and I'm basically going to just show you how this is going to work with Enscape. So you can see the Vectorworks model, I'll give you a quick spin around that, that's the model in Vectorworks to begin with and all we need to do is basically click with one click um, on the Start Enscape button and I'm just going to kind of minimize Vectorworks over to that side of my screen. Let's just pop that there. And you can see it's already loaded up in the other side of the screen in Enscape. So the beauty of Enscape is really you can kind of use it in this split screen mode. And I do find that when I'm plugged into my two screens, and um, what I really like is Vectorworks on one screen, Enscape on the other. Obviously, that's really difficult to video and to come across in a tutorial like this. So I thought I'd do the split screen. But you can see the brilliant thing is when we sync the uh, views by clicking the synchronization button, anything we do in Vectorworks is immediately replicated in Enscape on the right hand side. Now one of the lovely things with Enscape is the quality of the lighting. So you can see immediately I can start um, dragging the lighting around the time of day. Now to do that I'm just holding the shift key and right clicking to drag. You can also do it with the U and the I key on the keyboard. And what that will basically do is simulate the different times of the day just so you can get a nice looking kind of rendering. Or, you know, if you do want to actually do like a realistic kind of shadow study, you can. So if you're kind of ready, then you can go up into visual settings. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of the settings in here. Um, under the rendering side, you can kind of turn on the outline. So I quite like this at sketch design stage. Um, before I get a bit more realistic, I quite like having some outlines there. And you can see it's quite nice in that we can kind of basically render out a view. Let's go and set up um, a folder for our renders for this particular project. And um, we'll kind of create a new folder in there just for this particular project. And all we need to do really is basically once we've set the path, we can basically cl click take screenshot. And this will enable us to render out into that particular folder every time. Also under the capture section, don't forget to set the resolution of the images you're looking for. So when I click take screenshot, I do get the opportunity, which is nice in Enscape, just to tweak the view a little bit, um, just so I can kind of tweak that view, adjust it with my sort of zooming in, zooming out, uh, hold the middle button to pan around the view, just kind of frame it up rather nicely. And when, you, when you're ready, there we go, just kind of looks nice to get it framed up and we click OK and that will basically render up that in Enscape in a very, very short space of time, a very, very high quality rendering. So while you've got the um, nice little render in Vectorworks, the OpenGL type render, which I use all day long in Vectorworks, I really love uh, the OpenGL in Vectorworks. You can put shadows and stuff on as well. You know, these are nothing like as realistic as the Enscape view um, that you can see on the right hand side. So let's just kind of pan across with Vectorworks to begin with, um, just to kind of frame up that view. I will go and take another screenshot when we're ready. And the nice thing with Enscape, you can just pop out and basically adjust the view anytime. But do bear in mind, as soon as you click back into the Vectorworks view, it will synchronize back onto the Enscape screen. So that's pretty good. I'm going to click OK and just accept that view and render that up. You can see it all takes just really a couple of seconds and you get very high quality renders. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying using Enscape, almost like a, a side by side renderer for my Vectorworks models as I develop the project. I think more and more um, real-time rendering is, is becoming not just a kind of output stage thing, but more of a design tool as well. So you can see in the time I've been talking, I've knocked off a number of nice little renders. So these little kind of nice um, renders with the edges look great, I think. But I'd also like to show you how you can do um, the white card model type look. So I'm just going to pop into the rendering settings. I'm going to turn the edges off. I'm going to go to change the mode to white. And this gives you a beautiful kind of white card model with beautiful global illumination um, straight out the box. And again, this is very responsive as you change the time of day and the lighting. You can kind of simulate that. So, you know, this is sort of traditionally the white card model that architects would have made. Um, and these things take, you know, days to make with the scalpel and the glue everywhere. Um, you know, using your computer, you can now basically render up these white card models from any view in seconds. So these are great for the early stage of the project when you don't really want to get into the debate about what color the brick is or different materials. You just want to talk about the massing and the kind of volumes that you're trying to create and uh, show your client the sort of you know, ideal concept rather than sort of get debating about the sort of finer points of materials. Also, they just look great. And in my view, most architects love these kind of white card models. 
They're really, really sort of nice little things. So very easy to do. In fact, um, Enscape features two different types, the white card model. And if you do look under the mode, there's also another one called polystyrol, which is a very slightly different sort of tone. So I'm just going to kind of tweak that view a little bit there. There we go. Just sort of rotate that round a little bit more to the front there. It's quite nice having a little bit of the sky in there. And when we're ready, all we do, just pan around, tweak that view, click OK. And look how long it takes to render. It's literally done before you kind of finish. You know, it takes a couple of seconds max. Um, I've got a pretty good graphics card, so that does help a lot. But, um, you know, let's go back to normal mode for a bit. And we'll do a few sort of what I call final renders. So this is without any edges um, in realistic mode. And basically, we'll just start to add a few assets at this stage before we kind of do these final renders. So one of the really lovely things with Enscape um, is the way it integrates with your library. Okay, so all you need to do is go to the asset library and Enscape comes with a fantastic library of assets. And the brilliant thing with the Enscape asset library is that when you actually drop them into your CAD software, it's quite unique really, um, you'll notice that they're actually low polygon. And what happens is they translate into high resolution, high quality assets in Enscape. So the brilliant thing with this is it doesn't take up much model size or um, file size. It certainly doesn't slow uh, the Vectorworks model down at all. And I've experimented with putting you know, quite a lot of different assets into the project. It really doesn't have an effect. Um, so you can see, I'm just going to see if I can drop this car in. I'm going to go to maybe top plan view, drop that down. Then I can kind of rotate it nicely. Um, as soon as I kind of let go and place that sort of bit like placing a symbol in Vectorworks, that will appear um, as soon as I change back into a 3D view. Okay, so let's go and add um, some vegetation. And again, the Enscape library has a really nice asset library of trees and plants. Um, which is pretty cool. So let's place a few trees in the back garden here. I know there's a couple there to, just to give a bit of context really. Um, you can see they're very low polygon in Vectorworks. They're not particularly high resolution, really, really rapid to place. Now you do notice that they won't actually um, feature in the landscape until you spin into 3D. Um, so I think what happens is it doesn't synchronize while it's in orthogonal views. But as soon as I kind of pop it into a 3D view or perspective view, they're those beautiful trees. And you will notice actually when you're moving around on the Enscape screen, can you notice very slightly the, the trees are animated, which is quite a nice little touch. Um, so this means that when you actually do animations in Enscape, um, things like the trees and the grass blow in the wind these days, a bit like with Twin Motion. Okay, cool. Now you can see what I've done now. I've turned off my uh, layers in Vectorworks. And this is a really exceptional feature in that you can just kind of manage your layer visibilities. So this means you can render beautiful kind of top down plans and things like this very easily. I can do a bit of tweaking on the sun um, and again, see how this kind of plan interacts during the day with the sunlight coming into the model. So that's actually really nice to plan out that kitchen and show the client exactly, you know, what time the sun's going to come in on breakfast time or in the afternoon or evening or something. So it's very, very quick. If I do actually want to render some floor plans, um, all I need to do is tweak the view, click OK, and that will kind of render out this floor plan. Let's go for that, take a second or two. And then I simply turn on my other layers in Vectorworks. So I go and turn on my first floor. There it is. That'll immediately update an Enscape there. And we can render that one out quite rapidly. So I'm just going to click and accept the standard view there, just so I can get them all the same actually this time. And you can see how rapid this is. Let's click the roof layer on. There we go. Ticket in Vectorworks so immediately appears, immediately then appears in Enscape with the synchronization. Click OK. And that's it. We've rendered out three floor plans, you know, roof plan, <laughs> ground floor plan, and a first floor plan. Beautifully rendered, really nice three dimensional plans. It's really the same with the elevations. So I'm going to put this into front view. And now what I'm going to do is actually turn on the um, context, the site. And that's where I've actually placed these Enscape assets down on the site there. Um, you can see, I think they're just floating slightly. That's to do with my layer heights. So I'm just going to go to Vectorworks, move them, move 3D. Let's move them down. I think it was minus 150, the datum for my site. That then immediately drops them down in the Enscape side. Um, so those kind of cars and people and things won't be floating anymore once we do that. So the great thing with layers is in Vectorworks, you can actually set these up as three dimensional layers. So they stack up on top of each other. Um, and this is basically the essence of building a simple BIM model. Well, wh whether it's got information in the BIM model or whether it's just a kind of geometric 3D model. So I'm just going to tweak this elevational view. That's a really lovely little view. Um, if you were thinking about doing planning drawings, 
you know, why would you actually kind of use CAD to draw these kind of drawings when these days rendering out elevations is so much more effective? Now, a little trick you do sometimes need to play is use some layers or some classes to manage the visibility of things like these trees. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a class for those trees. Okay, and that means then I can use my visibility tool in Vectorworks to zap those and turn those off, um, or gray them rather. Let's turn them right off. And then basically I'll be able to look at that view without those trees turned on. Okay, so now we can look at that elevation at the rear without the trees on, um, and that's nice. So we can do a quick render of that. Let's just adjust the lighting and the daytime a bit. Um, just kind of scroll right through to it, it looks rather nice. Get some nice sort of shadows on the elevation as well. So I'm just holding shift down and the right button on the mouse. Um, it's really nice at light time. Do you notice the exterior lights actually pop on in Vectorworks, which is pretty cool. Didn't expect that to be fair. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit here. I'm just using my mouse wheel to zoom in just to kind of frame up a bigger view. And um, one thing that is tricky when you're doing the split screen is the resolution of the images tend to be, you know, kind of landscape, computer screen size. Um, and obviously you're working on a very portrait size canvas. Um, so do bear that in mind. It's so much nicer when you're on the two screens. So if you've got two monitors, this is an absolutely dream setup. You've got your Vectorworks on one screen doing everything you need to do design-wise. And then you've got your Enscape on the other side, uh, basically doing high quality renderings just in real time as you're working. This is the real selling point of Enscape. It's just beautiful lighting and really nice high quality kind of graphics in real time. You can see um, as we scroll through, even, even the nighttime view looks pretty nice. So we've just kind of gone to one of our save views inside the model, inside this kitchen. And basically let's kind of just do a little bit of tuning onto the rendering. Um, so I'm just gonna pop in and just see if there's any settings I need to tweak in here. There's a few preferences and things like that. Nothing really that I need to actually change for now, but I just wanted to make sure um, I've got ray tracing on. Um, by the way, you can also control things like the speed in there as well. Excellent, okay, so let's go back into Vectorworks. Um, well, sometimes when you're in Enscape, you kind of, you know, pull and crash into walls and things. So just sort of learn carefully how to drive around. Now you use the WASDA keys like most traditional gaming software, but it can be quite um, sensitive, I find. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is basically just render out a screenshot rather quickly. This is like a before, and um, we actually kind of put anything inside the model. So we're just gonna render that one out. This is our base image, you can see, without any work at all, it looks fantastic almost. Um, just nice quality of rendering there. The internal views take a, a tiny bit longer to render, I've noticed, but that's probably because it's calculating more um, advanced global illumination and things like that. Brilliant, okay, so now we're gonna to go to the asset library and we're gonna start kind of propping out this model a little bit more. So let's go to um, something like accessories and you can see we've got things like some bottles of wine and kind of all, all sorts of things there. Now do remember it's quite tempting to place it into the Enscape side, but we actually put it into the Vectorworks model. So all your actual CAD placement, all your modeling is done in Vectorworks. You really don't do any of that in Enscape. See Enscape as a kind of like a plugin really for Vectorworks. Um, basically it sits alongside and it works with your CAD software. So it doesn't replace it, it definitely works as a, an enhancement or an add-on. But you can see it's really nice just sort of these high quality assets. Um, you're placing them in Vectorworks, they're just extremely low proxy uh, objects. And then as soon as they kind of translate over to Enscape, they translate into high quality ones. So I was thinking about this actually, I'm sure there'll be a way where you can make um, Vectorworks symbols and things like that one day. It'd be lovely if you could correspond those with uh, the appropriate high resolution assets in Enscape. And I know that there is a new feature in Enscape 2.9 where you can actually build your own custom asset library. So I will be exploring that in some other videos to come. But you can see I'm working fairly rapidly. I mean, this is just um, me working in real time. Um, so I might speed the video up in a minute because I did record a fair bit of footage for this particular uh, section. I might just speed it up a little bit and show you where I got to and then I'll come back and do some vocals in a minute. Thanks for watching.
Okay, so I'm back and you can see we've made some really nice rapid progress in a very short space of time with Enscape and Vectorworks together. Um, now, Enscape is only available on the PC at the moment, unfortunately. I wish it was available on the Mac as well. I really hope it comes to the new Mac M1 processors once those start to sort of really get going, maybe when the Pro models come out next year. But what do you think, guys? I think it's a really nice asset. Um, I really like using uh, Twin Motion and Enscape, but you see, you know, Twin Motion is one of those external sort of bits of software that you kind of run separately. Whereas Enscape, the beauty of it is really to work side by side um, as you're actually adapting your model. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of hand you over to some music and play you out with some final renders that we did during the course of this little tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.